this presentation is on the nutrition recommendations. We'll start with um, some objectives, then talk about the dietary guidelines for Americans, my plate, some guidelines for infant feeding, nutrition assessment, and finish up with some key messages and some resources for you. So the objectives are to describe the dietary guidelines for promoting health among infants, children, and teens, identify food consumption behaviors and meal patterns to promote good health, and then, as I said, end with the key messages for promoting healthy eating and some resources for you. So let's talk about the guidelines. So the Dietary Guidelines for Americans are revised every five years, and the 2015 to 2020 uh, guidelines uh, have five overarching principles or guidelines. First is to follow a healthy eating pattern across the lifespan, and the, uh, the bottom line is that everything you eat or drink um, contributes to the overall pattern of what you're what you're um, going to get into your body. So you want to choose a healthy eating pattern with the appropriate calorie level to help you maintain a healthy weight, get the nutrients that you need, and reduce your risk of chronic disease. And we want to be able to counsel our families on that. The second principle or guideline is to focus on variety um, with nutrient dense and, um, and calorie light uh, foods and to choose a variety of things within all food groups and in the recommended amounts. The third is to limit calories from added sugar, saturated fats, and to reduce so sodium intake. The fourth uh, overarching guideline is to shift to healthier food and beverage choices and um, again to consider cultural and personal preferences is important, and then to support healthy eating patterns for everyone. Um, and this is more the advocacy role that we talked about in the, um, the obesity guidelines um, to support healthy eating patterns in multiple settings across the nation and in the communities where we work. So um, one big principle is to reduce calorie-dense, nutrient-poor foods. So eating less foods that have solid fats and added sugars. And those are the things that taste good to our families and the children, and um, they need our support in trying to uh, replace those things with something healthier. Cut back on foods higher in fat um, to lower fat options, and um, Saturated fats and trans fats and cholesterol should be limited. Reduce the risk of high blood pressure, heart disease, and stroke by cutting down on processed foods and reducing sodium intake. So more home-cooked meals and prepared with less salt. And reduce the consumption of refined grains and replace with whole grains. So another one of the key principles is to consume a healthy eating pattern um, that accounts for all foods and beverages with an appropriate calorie level. So a healthy variety of vegetables from all groups with dark green, red and orange legumes, starchy and other fruits, especially whole fruits are encouraged, and grains, at least half whole grains, fat-free or low-fat, um, milk, yogurt, cheese, soy, and a variety of pro proteins from all the groups, seafood, lean meats, poultry, eggs, legumes, nuts, seeds, and soy. So the key recommendations are also to set some healthy limits. Consume less than 10% of calories per day from added sugar. Consume less than 10% of calories per day from saturated fats. Consume less than 2,300 milligrams of sodium. If the person drinks alcohol, one drink per day for women and two per day for men and for children. Um, most of the clients we are seeing are not of legal age and should not be consuming alcohol. So unless they're 21, which is in your scope of practice, um, alcohol should 
not be ingested. Overall, we want to limit saturated fats, trans fats, added sugar, and sodium. The my plate is a good way to convey the proportion of um, fruits and vegetables should be about half the plate, grains a quarter, and protein a quarter, and then a little cup of dairy. So this just helps with um, both a variety of foods and the proportion of foods. And um, eating less and avoiding oversized portions is an important part of the message. My plate has um, a 10 tip series which you can access at that um, website and um, it has easy to follow tips in a convenient printable format for that you can use to hand out to your patients. Um, you can choose one or more tip sheets to start making small changes. What I like to do is have all of them available and ask the families which one they think would be um, a good place for them to start and make it their choice. Guidelines for infant feeding. Um, breastfeeding exclusively for the first six months of life is ideal. Breast milk has the ideal balance of nutrients to meet an infant's needs and encouraging the mother to exclusively breastfeed during this time is the healthiest option for the baby if it's possible for her. If the child is not breastfed, iron fortified cow's milk uh, formula or soy based formulas can be um, used instead. We encourage families to introduce the complementary feeding between four to seven months of age. Infants developmentally are not ready to consume and, um, before that four to six month age um, range. And introduction of the complementary food should not be delayed beyond eight months um, because of the need for the additional calories and nutrients. So what additional information do you need about the nutrition assessment? We want to assess intake of fruits and vegetables and we want to be real clear that it's five fruits and vegetables that substitute those nutrient uh, poor foods, um, not in addition to. So if you have a kid, and there have been a, a number of studies now that say if you have an average diet that's pretty unhealthy and you just add five fruits and vegetables, the child is not going to lose weight and may even gain weight. It's substituting the, the energy dense foods for the um, fruits and vegetables. You also want to assess the intake of sugar-sweetened beverages and what types of beverages and see if there's something uh, healthier that they can substitute. Many of the patients that I see in Sheridan are taking lots and lots of calories in um, sugar-sweetened beverages. We also want to assess specifically fast food consumption and what specifically are they ordering there because um, some of our families really are on the move a lot and, and need to eat um, at fast food restaurants. And if that's the case, helping them identify what healthy foods are available there and making the best choices they can. Then you want, well, want to assess the meal patterns. Um, we know that breakfast consumption daily decreases a child's um, uh, incidence of or, or prevalence of being overweight or, or obese and that eating family meals together also decreases the risk. So those are two good um, behaviors that we want to assess for and encourage. We also want to talk about uh, infant feeding practices. So um, are they breastfeeding? Is it exclusive? What, um, how are they preparing the formula? Are they putting um, the right amount of water in? Um, for bottle fed babies, they are not uh, uh, force feeding them to finish a bottle, that the child has consistent weight gain. And then as we've already mentioned, introductory of the solid complementary foods when the baby's ready. So some of the key messages um, reduce the frequency of sugar-sweetened beverages and the portion. 
And um, this, I like this graphic because it depicts how much sugar is in each one of these bottles of Coke. Increase the consumption of fruits and vegetables. And I like the picture on the right hand side because it really talks about have a whole bunch of carrots instead of um, just a few chips for 100 calories. Have a whole bunch of grapes versus half of a, a pastry. Have an apple versus half a candy bar. Have a melon versus a quarter of a muffin. Have celery um, versus the pretzels. Just helping families visualize um, the same amount of calories, and it's all about choices, but they can actually have a bigger portion and feel more full with a healthier choice. Reduce the frequency of eating out um, and uh, just being aware of how many calories are in the things that they're ordering from fast food places and portion sizes. Um, portion sizes, uh, this graphic depicts that a one and a half ounce muffin is 210 calories versus a four ounce muffin is 500 calories. And just being aware of um, the really energy dense snacks and beverages. Encouraging family meals. We've already said it's, a, it's um, healthier food. It provides some role modeling behaviors from the parents. And um, besides the communication and the emotional um, support that children get from spending time with the family. Encourage regular breakfast consumption. Um, and they don't really need to cook something and they can make it quick if they use a low sugar cereal or with some low fat or non-fat milk and fruit. Um, breakfast on the go can be fruit or yogurt or granola bar with low fat milk. Encourage them to begin to read labels and you can even demonstrate some of that in the office um, just so they understand how many calories and, um, uh, and also encourage when they're eating out looking at calories. Key messages for the infant, um, the breastfeeding, uh, hopefully at least some breastfeeding in the first year of life, adding the complementary foods at four to seven months. Infants who are not breastfed need iron fortified cow's milk formula or soy, soy based formula until a year of age. For complementary foods, start with the infant cereals and then add pureed vegetable and fruit and introduce a variety of healthy choices. Uh, reinforce with the families they need to try a food seven to, to 11 times before they, um, the child will develop a taste for it, uh, so not to give up on it. Here are a, a variety of um, links to resources that you can use um, for handouts for your families. And here's a variety of um, references if you want more information.